On the single circuit cars, some customers like to have a remote brake servo fitted. I have to say, personally speaking, we've never particularly liked them. The brakes on the Amazon are so good anyway that you just don't need it. But um, if you're used to a modern car with light pedal pressures, then I guess I can understand why you might choose to fit it, perhaps. However, if you are of a mind that you decide you have to have a servo, then let's just have a look at this example here in John's car. There are two caveats in the fitting instructions for the Lockheed remote servo. And in John's car, the installer has ignored both of them. Okay, so the first is that here the breather should be pointing vertically down or within 30 degrees of vertically down. And the second one is the advice, which is good, that the nose here should be about 15 to 20 degrees above the horizontal. That's just to help bleeding. It makes life so much easier. This one is horizontal, so air will try and tend to stay inside the cylinder here. Okay, so we're going to remove this unit and then we're going to fit it properly. Now, I'm not going to show you how to remove this, it's just the question of four bolts and detaching the servo hose and the two brake lines. Um, so I'll join you again in half an hour when I come to fit the unit back in. Embarrassingly, as you can see, since I last spoke to you, the servo has miraculously appeared installed. I, um, I did what was really a very nice video of installing it all and bending the pipes and rigging it and um, I forgot to switch the microphone on. So I'll do another quick bit now and say what I have done rather than doing it. Here we go. So our preference uh, when installing the Lockheed Servo is to mount it direct to the inner wing. Uh, this has two advantages. Um, one, it's a very neat installation and two, you can get all the angles absolutely perfect without encroaching into the engine bay much. So we mount it on the inner wing with the nose pointing at number one cylinder here and making sure that the base of the servo rests clear of this little bit of rib here on the inner wing. So we drill two 5 16 holes um, level there and there and it's 79 mil apart that must be something in imperial measurements I'm sure but I don't know what it is uh, but 79 mil apart 5 16 hole and then we secure it with a pair of 5 16 nylocks and a pair of Form C washers, um, so slightly larger than standard. Okay, so that's now mounted on the inner wing with the correct angle as per the manual of um, an incline to the nose of between 10 to 20 degrees to assist bleeding and with the breather facing down within 30 degrees axial. Um, so that is now correctly installed. Then we fitted the brake pipes. So this one coming into the side of the servo, that is from the brake master cylinder. The one coming out of the nose of the servo goes to the brake four-way manifold and the brake switch over there. So to summarise, um, we have an input from the brake master cylinder into the side of the servo and an output to the brake system on the nose end of the servo. Okay, so having mounted it, we've then hooked up the brake pipes and now we put vacuum hose to the inlet manifold. Now, the nipple on the inlet manifold uh, Volvos have two different types. One is a straight through big bore one, 
and then they have another one which has a capillary hole in the middle of it rather than full bore. The capillary hole one is actually for the engine breather. The servo should have the full bore nipple and that then goes into proper vacuum air brake hose. We always fit a non-return valve and then into the servo. <clears throat> the non-return valve of course needs you to be able to suck from the manifold end to suck air through. That's how you get that one the right way around. Um, well, that's it. We've now got it correctly installed as per the fitting instructions. Neatly done without um, encroaching into this area of the engine bay. Um, you still have good access on the right-hand drive car to your alternator and down to your fuel pump and to your uh, distributor. It's a neat installation putting it there. Um, However, if you've got a concourse car, then arguably, I guess you kind of have to use the original style of mounting bracket such that the servo sits here. I do have one final observation, and that is that uh, we have found good results using DOT 5.2 brake fluid. Um, it, it's got a good high temperature, so it's suitable for competition. Uh, and very easy to work with. So we always use DOT 5.2 brake fluid. Okay, I do apologise for having forgotten to switch on my microphone when I did my rather pleasingly good video to start with, but that gives you the important points. Thank you.